What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out top 10 greatest Eddie Guerrero lie, cheat, and steal moments. Eddie going too soon. That's all I can really say about him. Uh his lying, his cheating, and stealing. Even though it's a heel-like thing, people just love and endeared him for it because he was just so good at it, you know? So um, we're going to check out some of these legendary moments, man, because it's always good to see some Eddie Guerrero shenanigans. Rest in peace to the legend himself, man. I'm always saying going too soon, man. It would have been so amazing to see what he could have did later in his career, you know, if given an opportunity. So we're gonna get, we're gonna get right into this one. Appreciate all love and support. Let's do the damn thing. One, two, is this on? Kurt Angle had the three eyes. John Cena had hustle, loyalty, and respect. For Brock Lesnar, it was eat, sleep, conquer, repeat. While for Eddie Guerrero, it was all about lying, cheating, cheating and, and stealing. stealing. Eddie made a career out of tricking his opponents, lying to referees, and stealing victories, as well as all sorts of other items along the way. <laughs> Guerrero's behavior was quite different from that of a typical babyface, but this was all part of his charm. Hello! I love that it. That and his connection with the crowd are just some of the reasons why he's held in such high regard by fans and those within the industry. There's nobody ever like him that talked like him and had that personality and that, you know, and you knew when you lost Eddie Guerrero that you lost a one of a kind. Eddie's motto of lie, right. cheat, steal resulted in some truly epic television that many of us look back on fondly to this day. Oh! Steel tear across the spine! What? Eddie Guerrero, look at... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> so for this list, we're counting down the top 10 oh, Eddie Guerrero this. lying, cheating, and stealing this moments. Is great. Before we kick off the list, we'll run through some honorable mentions. Eddie's signature way of deceiving the referee was by planting a weapon on his opponent. And Guerrero was up to his old tricks in a match against <laughs> Matt Hardy on SmackDown yep. in 2003. After the referee grabbed the United States title belt from Hardy, Eddie's nephew Chavo ran to hit Matt with the tag team belt. And this allowed Eddie to get the win. And the Latino Heat loved to bend the rules any way he Love could to gain that, an man. advantage. And this included moving the tag rope during a match where he teamed with Booker T <laughs> against the Ashens in 2005. <laughs> Even though the referee caught him, you have to love Eddie for his creativity. I've never seen that before. I gotta say that. It was quite fitting that Eddie won his final ever match in classic lie, cheat, and steal fashion. While wrestling Mr. Kennedy on SmackDown, Eddie smacked a chair off the mat and then threw it to Kennedy, while Guerrero pretended <laughs> as if he had just been hit. So when the referee got back to his feet, he assessed the situation and disqualified oh, Kennedy love it, as man. giving Eddie the win. Number 10, stealing Kurt Angle's possessions and auctioning them off. Eddie's feud with <laughs> Kurt Angle took SmackDown by storm in 2004. And even when Kurt was injured, Guerrero still found ways to torment the Olympic gold medalist. But with Kurt set to return to action by facing Eddie at SummerSlam, Latino Heat had one more trick up his sleeve to get under Angle's skin. After Kurt had been fired as SmackDown general manager, Guerrero managed to get a hold of the items Angle decorated his office with. Eddie hatched a plan to auction off each one of Kurt's possessions for charity. Kurt eventually interrupted and looked to get revenge by stealing Guerrero's lowrider. Unfortunately for Angle, Eddie had booby-trapped the car, which left Kurt humiliated. <laughs> Guerrero then got Angle's music to play, as Eddie and the fans then sang along with You Suck, suck. Chance directed oh, at Angle. Man. You suck. You suck. You suck. <laughs> the next week, Eddie came out with some of SmackDown's divas to Bro, try and help Eddie, man, Eddie was holding down the SmackDown for it. There was a lot of good talent on SmackDown. In my opinion, around this time, even though Raw had some great storylines, great stuff that was going on, you can't deny, if you didn't have cable, you was okay with watching SmackDown every week because there was some good stuff on SmackDown for sure. Great the value of Angle's possessions. They each signed Angle's old leg cast while Eddie <laughs> offered to add hydraulics to Kurt's wheelchair. Not Eddie then mentioned that he, just like Angle, also competed in the Olympic Games. Eddie then shows us a hilarious promotional video hyping Summer Sam in which Eddie cheats to win the 100 meter sprint. Stole my memorabilia. That was for a good cause. That was for charity. Oh. I don't give a damn. Number nine, <laughs> cheating backfires. Next, we'll look at a match where Eddie's attempt to cheat backfired. This happened 
Roman when he teamed with Booker T to challenge Rey Mysterio and Rob Van Dam for the WWE Tag Team titles on the last SmackDown in 2004. After the referee got inadvertently taken out, a familiar smile came over Eddie's face, which is usually a precursor to him bringing a weapon into the mm -hmm. ring. However, this time, Eddie wrestled with his conscience a bit before grabbing the tag bell and placing it onto the chest of Rey Mysterio so that when Nick Patrick got up, it looked as though Rey had hit Eddie with the gold. Eddie tried his luck once too often though, as Patrick turned around when Eddie was taunting Mysterio. Latino Heat then tried to convince the ref he'd been hit. <laughs> Even getting Patrick to raise his hand, but as he did this, Ray interrupted and was eventually able to pin Guerrero, allowing Mysterio and RVD to retain the tag titles. After the match, Eddie hilariously explained to Booker T what had happened, while Mysterio laughed, having that one over on Latino Heat. Number eight, Poison's Big Show's Burrito. By the fall of 2003, Eddie held both the United States and tag team titles, as his popularity was soaring. It was during this time that Eddie also had some run-ins with the Big Show, who had his eyes Damn. on the US Championship. After Show attacked the Guerrero's backstage, Eddie planned to get his revenge. First, we would see a Mexican gentleman attempt to deliver some burritos to Eddie. However, the Big Show took a few for himself, leaving just one for Eddie that Show covered in some special sauce. Show then wrestled Orlando Jordan. However, it was clear that something was wrong with the world's largest athlete. Show was in so much trouble, he had to walk out on the match to get to the nearest toilet. This meant Big Show lost his count out, but this would be the least of the Giants' worries. With Show struggling inside a bathroom store, Eddie revealed his master plan. Latino Heat had covered the burritos with a secret source of his own. Both men played their roles to perfection oh. here, with Big Show especially <laughs> delivering some priceless facial expressions. <laughs> now nah, he'll take you to toilet paper. Hey, man, comment down below if you've ever been in a situation you ate something that you probably shouldn't have had, a little bit too spicy for you. You couldn't wait to get home. It, you weren't going to make it, so you had to make an emergency pit stop. That has recently happened to me, bro. Trust me. I be trying to be like hold it in, but my stomach was toe up from the flow up. I had to make an emergency stop to a, a gas station. Luckily, the gas station restroom was super clean, which I was surprised about. And nobody was there. So I was I was thankful about that. But boy, sometimes it happens, man. And this this is a cool segment, man. <laughs> And as if it couldn't get any worse for the big show, the next week he'd still be full of crap, but it was going to take more than toilet paper to clean up this mess. Number seven, Eddie steals the Great American Award. With Kurt Angle out injured and having taken up the role of SmackDown general manager, he was asked with deciding the number one contender for Eddie Guerrero's WWE Young Championship. Cena. This was to be decided via fan voting on WWE.com, where the winner would also receive the Great American Award. But despite John Cena's landslide victory, the number one contendership and award was given to JBL. <laughs> Angle then revealed the trophy. However, it was clear that it had been stolen by Eddie. Guerrero then drove down to the ring using the award as a hood ornament. Eddie threatened to destroy the trophy as well as JBL's limo, while Angle demanded the trophy be given back. Guerrero did eventually break part of the trophy by snapping off one of the eagle's wings. I would be extremely... Oh, what the Eddie then proceeded to attack JBL <laughs> with the trophy as Bradshaw and Angle fled the ring. From there, Guerrero destroyed the award with a steel chair. Angle was on fire during this segment as he and JBL sold their anger over Eddie's stealing and breaking the trophy <laughs> tremendously. The as for Eddie, crunches. well, he was his usual comedic self here. Overall, this was a great way to continue his feud with Kurt Angle while also kickstarting the WWE Champions feud with JBL. Number mm -hmm. six, stealing Ric Flair's number. Next, we have an all-time great Royal Rumble moment that took place at the 2005 event. This Eddie and Ric Flair Flair were next out to draw their numbers for the Rumble match. Flair went first and was overjoyed after finding out the number he drew. Guerrero, on the other hand, wasn't so pleased. After the Nature Boy was done celebrating, Eddie hugged him and wished Rick good luck. After Eddie left, Flair then proudly showed off his number to the Divas and general managers. They looked on in confusion, and Nate would soon find out why when he looked at his number again and came to an unfortunate <laughs> realization. Guerrero! 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 Stole my Later on in the show, SmackDown GM Teddy Long demanded that Eddie return the stolen number to Flair. Eddie eventually gave it back, but there was still another surprise in store for the Nature Boy. Once the Royal Rumble match began, we would soon learn why Guerrero had switched out his number for Flair's, since Eddie entered the match first, while Rick was the final entrant in the coveted number 30 spot. Number 5, Eddie caught red-handed by the referee. We've got another example of Eddie being caught in the act of cheating, and it once again involves Rey Mysterio. This time, it was he and Eddie that were the tag team champions, but that didn't stop the two from wrestling each other on SmackDown in early 2005. Sometime into the match... The and I've said this before, Rey was the heart of SmackDown. He, he, bro, he's putting on some great matches, great feuds. And that's why when Eddie passed, him winning the Royal Rumble, that was, that was Vince 
pretty much giving him a bone, throwing him a bone, because obviously, you know, Vince is more into the bigger guys, you know, and the, uh, the more muscular men, you know what I'm saying? He's into those guys, so Ray doesn't fit that stature, but it was just a good gesture uh, to give Ray that legendary Royal Rumble win and for him to win the, the World Heavyweight Championship, which is a, a, a pretty, mo pretty cool moment. He accidentally ended up on the receiving end of a seated senton by Ray. The smirk on Eddie's face could only mean one thing. Guerrero <laughs> set out to stage the scene again, just like before, but this time he was extra careful. However, Ray managed to turn the tables by throwing the belt to Eddie while the ref, Brian Hebner, got back. <laughs> <laughs> Guerrero then had to hide the belt under his body as Hebner attempted to figure out what happened. And just when Eddie tried to dispose of the title, Hebner caught him in the act as Ray laughed on in the background. <laughs> Hebner saw this and then confronted Ray, threatening to disqualify both men. As Guerrero complained, he had unknowingly positioned himself for the 619, but he was able to dodge it, responding with a small package that Mysterio was able to counter into a pin of his own, and this ultimately earned Ray the win. Afterward, Ray forcibly shook Eddie's hand after Guerrero had refused to show any sportsmanship. They eventually hugged, although it was clear Eddie was upset that Mysterio had now got on the better of him twice. Mm -hmm. This played into Eddie's eventual heel turn on Ray that yep. a few months later. Which Number was four. fucking good. <laughs> it was good. The old Dominic stuff was a little bit extreme, but either way, oh, it was so good. So, so good, bro. Miss you, Eddie, man. Or stealing JBL's limo. Even though Eddie had his lowrider, that didn't stop him from having fun with other people's cars. JBL experienced this more than once. <laughs> During the time, Eddie stole Bradshaw's limo on SmackDown in 2004. Whoa! We are going for a ride. And it's going to be better than Disneyland. Hold on. When Guerrero returned to the arena with the limo, it was clear he'd been out on one hell of a joyride. Once JBL regained consciousness, he crawled out of the backseat and it was only then that he realized just how much damage Eddie had caused. This drove Bradshaw to tears while Guerrero looked cool on, segment. grinning from ear to ear to close out an incredibly funny segment. It looks like you got a hangover, Essie! Orale, viva mi raza! <laughs> Number three, Eddie's whipful thinking. On the November 6, 2003 episode of SmackDown, the deck was stacked against Eddie. He went up against the Basham brothers in a two-on-one handicap match. The Bashams also had Shaniqua in their corner, who was armed with a whip. Eddie attempted a frog splash, but as he did this, Shaniqua got on the apron and distracted the referee, Nick Patrick. While the Basham switched places in the ring, Guerrero poked Shaniqua in the eye and managed to get a hold of the whip, which Eddie then used on both Danny Basham and Nick Patrick before planting the whip on Basham just as Nick turned around. <laughs> I like how the ref like, hey, yo, what you doing? <laughs> and with Basham distracted, this allowed Eddie to swoop in with a schoolboy and pick up the victory. It was a classic moment oh, with Eddie winning man. the only way he knew how. Number two, WWE title victory. Mm -hmm. Eddie walked into the 2004 No Way Out event wrestling the biggest match of his career, challenging Brock Lesnar for the WWE championship. Despite being the heavy underdog on paper, Guerrero was the overwhelming favorite in of the eyes course. of the crowd. He was without question one of the most popular wrestlers in the company going into the paper. View. With the referee down, Lesnar's rival mm -hmm. Goldberg looks set to hand Eddie the win by hitting a spear on the champion. But this could only muster up a two count from the official. And with the ref still barely <laughs> conscious, Guerrero <laughs> attempted to use the WWE title belt to nail Brock, only for the champ to duck and kick Eddie in the gut before hoisting him up for the F5. But Latino Heat responded with a miraculous counter, DDTing Lesnar onto the gold. And with the capacity crowd on their feet, Eddie delivered a frog splash. Mm -hmm. The referee crawled over to count the three, making Eddie Guerrero the new WWE champion. Great the moment. The celebrations were spectacular as Eddie jumped into the crowd celebrating with the very people who would help Love make all moment. this happen through their unwavering support. Look at that pop. That was awesome, man. Number one, WrestleMania moment. Mm -hmm. Eddie continued to treat fans to some fantastic television whilst WWE champion, but it couldn't have been a tougher first big title defense than against Kurt Angle at WrestleMania 20. Angle dissected Guerrero's ankle to the point where Eddie looked to untie his boot to relieve the pressure as he struggled in pain. Kurt went straight back to the ankle lock, but because he had hold of Guerrero's boot, the champion mm -hmm. was able to loosen his foot out, even more allowing Eddie to escape the hold, leaving Angle with Eddie's boot in his hand as Guerrero used a small package to score the pinfall with both his feet on the ropes for leverage. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this! One package! One, two, three! Wins! 
Eddie had once again found an ingenious way to win a match. And with such high stakes up for grabs on the grandest stage of them all, victory couldn't have tasted any sweeter. Although lying, cheating, and stealing in real life might not be the best idea, in the world of wrestling, it can breathe creativity, resulting in hilarious moments. And if you're as good as Eddie Guerrero, create one of the most beloved wrestlers of all time. Yeah. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you- All right, this video was great. Love, love going down memory lane. He's the one of the few people. He, he's essentially a baby face because the crowd love him, but he's doing heel like things. Cheating, all that stuff. That's a heel. That's a heel maneuver. But the fans loved him so much, it didn't matter, bro. And that is when, when you know you're that over, man. He talented in the ring. People loved him. Had the charisma. I don't. I mean, I don't know what else to say other than, hey, man, Eddie, we miss you down here. Uh, you know, we'll lo we love you. We'll always cherish what you've done for the industry, for the business. And, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're thankful. We're thankful, man. Uh, that's all you can say. So, comment down below. Let me know what's your favorite Eddie Guerrero moment of all time. Let me know down below. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel. Road to 150K. And I am still your undisputed YouTube wrestling champion of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.